Hi, my name is Lauren Stanley, and the topic of my presentation today speaks to the role of nonprofits or non-governmental organizations within disaster management. Let's start out by discussing why nonprofits are involved in the disaster management process. Also, keep in mind I'm going to be using the term NGO instead of nonprofit just for ease of this presentation. So, disaster-related NGOs play a primary role in performing the task outlined in the definition of disaster management, but a number of other individuals and groups also work to support these organizations with the necessary resources to carry out their purpose. Volunteers, faith-based community organizations, as well as all levels of government contribute to the disaster management process. While there are several players involved in coordinating disaster preparedness and relief efforts, it is the nonprofit organizations that perform many vital roles. As we know, disasters are a growing problem. They are non-routine events that demand non-routine responses when the public is not able to rely on normal recovery procedures. Disasters will become of increasing concern to the nonprofit sector as both citizens and government look to them for guidance, support, and recovery efforts when disaster strikes. This type of response requires specialized skills and attitudes which NGOs are equipped to provide. A central role that disaster management NGOs play is with regard to public awareness and access to vital information. Their goal is to inform vulnerable citizens of how to take protective measures against threats, to follow safe procedures, and tell them where to turn for assistance in an emergency. They provide leadership and guidance for disaster relief efforts and work to prepare communities to better cope for future disasters. Next, I wanted to quickly introduce just a couple of the important players I found in the disaster NGO field. One of the largest disaster response organizations in the U.S. is the American Red Cross, with over 700 local chapters and a mobilization team comprised of over half a million volunteers. And their international arm is called the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies and is the world's largest humanitarian network. Organizations such as Oxfam and Oxfam International and AmeriCares are two other examples. Now let's briefly look at other organizations and groups that support disaster relief NGOs. As I mentioned earlier, volunteers are an important group that help NGOs respond to disasters. A number of factors determine the probability that individuals will volunteer in a disaster, such as social networks, community identity, and the personal connection to the disaster event. Managing and coordinating volunteer efforts requires a networking structure that builds relationships among NGOs providing disaster relief. One such organization is the National Voluntary Organization Active in Disaster. They provide regular organizational meetings where groups share knowledge and resources throughout the cycle of preparation, response, and recovery to help survivors and communities. This type of advanced disaster networking systems will help in future disaster relief by fostering better communication, a sense of trust, more flexibility, and improved leadership in disaster NGOs. Faith-based community organizations are another nonprofit group that can help emotionally bridge groups of people suffering in the aftermath of a disaster. These groups function outside the realm of government and larger NGOs, and so are able to better respond to a local community's distinct needs. There are some needs of disaster survivors, such as grief counseling or dealing with the fear and anxiety about their own safety, that could be more efficiently served by FBOs. They stand in a unique position to help communities during disasters due to their ability to identify with citizens that may not be able, may not be able to benefit as much from general types of support. For example, during Hurricane Katrina, FBOs were recognized for the scale and speed of their response efforts during serving disenfranchised groups that were stranded in places that traditional volunteer NGOs either did not or would not enter. Now let's move into the more common role seen with NGOs, government. Government agencies fulfill an essential yet complex role alongside NGOs in disaster management. The local government within the disaster area should be the principal source of information to its citizens for relief and recovery efforts, plus act as coordinator between government and NGOs. But for coordination to be successful, there must be trust among government agencies and NGOs. Nonprofits must trust the government to respond equally to all affected areas and distribute the appropriate amount of relief, and nonprofits themselves must be held accountable for accurately distributing all available funds received. This relationship requires transparency and an understanding between government and NGOs for both to appreciate the policies and actions of the other. Disaster management efforts during all stages consistently face challenges. Beyond the typical challenges faced by disaster officials, NGOs face challenges in gaining support for their activities when they must justify them to government and the public. NGOs always struggle to raise enough funds and allocate sufficient resources to support their activities, and that is no different for disaster relief. Once again, transparency around all disaster-related activities is crucial. Disaster NGOs that provide information regarding their financials and the activities performed in effective areas will encourage donors' decisions. To effectively maintain transparency to the public, NGOs must clearly indicate which resources and donations were used to assist with disaster-related efforts versus everyday operations. As we are aware, disaster management typically occurs in a dynamic environment where having the necessary resources in place and readily available impacts relief efforts. 
These efforts are reinforced when diverse stakeholders collaborate with one another to speed up the donation process and ensure a variety of resources are available to help. NGOs can partner with businesses to understand which resources can be made available to support response relief and recovery efforts. Once a disaster strikes, people must have access to basic necessities such as food, clean water, and health services, so local groceries and restaurants, outside businesses, and healthcare services are prime examples of partners. Businesses can become partners in disaster management by offering basic services usually taken for granted in everyday life. For example, the Tide Loads of Hope mobile laundry program began in 2005 after Katrina and continues today by partnering with the American Red Cross to send their mobile laundromats into disaster affected areas where they spend multiple days at the site washing, drying, and folding clothes for disaster affected families in need. Effective disaster management is a complex project that is never quite complete. It requires continued preparedness efforts as well as commitment from citizens, disaster related organizations, and government working to respond and recover when disaster strikes. Strong leadership from each of these fields is a fundamental aspect of disaster management, especially in disaster relief NGOs. The need for disaster preparedness and associated relief efforts is not likely to go away anytime soon. And as it is inherent in the character of nonprofit organizations to provide services and resources benefiting the public, those NGOs providing disaster relief will do what it takes to accomplish their goals and fulfill the societal need. Thank you.